Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back. But if you are new here, please subscribe, follow, like, and feel free to comment on anything. I've been noticing some people commenting their experiences and other people responding to those. So um, I really want this to be a place where people can sort of share or bounce off ideas as to what is going on, especially based off rising sign. But with that being said, I have to remind all of you, this is not conclusive. This is just one transit out of many. However, you know, Jupiter is entering a whole new territory. So it is going to shift things and change things. I will get into each rising sign. So look out for that. If you're listening on YouTube, there will be chapters with links in the description below so you can easily bounce to it unfortunately if you're listening on spotify there will be the chapters below so you can fast forward to it but they don't let me do links the other thing i want to let you guys or notify of is the 2024 yearly guides on my website um on in my shop I'm going to be taking those down shortly um, to start generating new guides, new downloadable content. So if you are interested in the 2024 yearly guide from my shop, that will also be in the link below. You can visit my website. You can find it there based on your rising sign. I think I think they're only like $2.99, so very, very affordable. Um, I believe they're like 10 pages, there's questions and all of that, but I'm going to take them down at this point because we're getting to that point where we're kind of getting close to halfway through the year. Um, I need to start freeing up space to add other stuff. And lastly, if any of you are interested in affordable one-on-one astrology appointments um, or somatic therapy appointments as well, um, please visit my website and it's easy, just go to the appointments page, super easy to book, really easy, really accessible and affordable for now. Um, in the future, I might have to change that. Um, but for now, I'm trying to create a system and a platform where you guys can have accessible astrology because not everyone can pay $400 for an astrology appointment. Um, so take advantage of that for now. Um, and I love, I mean, meeting all of you has been just incredible meeting people from all over the world. Um, so grateful for each and every one of you. So if you're interested in joining and meeting me and establishing that astrology relationship, let's do it up, go for it. Now, That's sort of what I wanted to notify you guys of. Um, But like I said, there's going to be chapters for rising signs, but I'm going to go through introductory information. So like the last time Jupiter was in Gemini, um, other things to consider uh, before listening to your rising sign, context, you know, lots of information, context to deepen the situation and also information for you to apply to your own chart to gain more perspective because the last time Jupiter was in Gemini we had a very different situation playing out in in my opinion for a lot of us it was even challenging difficult at times so Just because a planet is um, benefic doesn't mean it doesn't come with its challenges or obstacles. And that was definitely the case last time. Now, the last time Jupiter was in Gemini, Jupiter did not square Saturn. Okay, This time in May, well, August, of 2024 and December of 2024, Jupiter will square Saturn, which I will get into. But the last time Jupiter didn't have this um, square, this this action aspect. And, you know, 
this was back in 2012, 2013. So think back. What was going on in 2012, 2013 in your life? And if you know your chart, what was going on in the area of your chart ruled by Gemini back in 2012, 2013? And in December of 2012, there was actually a Yod configuration with this Gemini, uh, with this Jupiter in Gemini. So December 2012, Yod configuration. What is a Yod? Yod is also called the finger of God. Sort of causes this um, continuous restlessness of, you know, it's like two planets are on the same page and that third apex planet is sort of like speaking a different language and it's sort of hard to integrate. So there's this constant restlessness of trying to learn and figure things out and um, it can even feel quite tense or you know irritable at times and you know Jupiter and Gemini was at the apex of this yacht so a yacht is like an isosceles triangle so we had Saturn and Scorpio and Pluto and Capricorn at the base of the triangle and this Jupiter and Gemini was at the apex of the point of the triangle so Yes, Jupiter was expanding this area of Gemini, but there was a lot of uncomfortable adjustment. And like I said, restlessness in these areas of life. Now, the relationship between Jupiter and Saturn last time in that 2012-2013 period was vastly different than it's going to be this time. And we also don't have a Yod configuration going on with Jupiter at the apex this time as well so very very different circumstances now in 2012 Saturn and Scorpio now this time Saturn's in Pisces but in 2012 Saturn was in Scorpio and it's sort of like Saturn wants to do something with all of this transformational energy in Scorpio, which sometimes can be destructive, right? Saturn wants to control, restrict, and restructure, and maybe even attach itself to this transformational energy in Scorpio, which can make things a bit messy when Scorpio typically doesn't always need to express what's going on beneath the surface, but Saturn wants to. So it kind of, that's where the conflict may have come up so while that Pluto and Capricorn was also involved with this yod like I mentioned was transforming and changing the area of our charts ruled by Capricorn but collectively it was also starting that transformation of the financial crisis in the U.S. Um, you know the transformation with our government, our healthcare, our systems, all of that. So you can see this quincunx with this yod formation with Jupiter at the apex. And like I said, you don't even need to know what any of these terms mean. It just basically means it was it was really challenging at one point. So this is where Jupiter is good fortune and abundance and luck. But if it's at the apex of a yod and it's configured to certain personal placements in your own chart, like I said, this isn't conclusive, um, it's going to flavor and color the story in really different ways. Now, to give you an example, right, because I really like to, I really like to give you visuals and I like to give, allow you guys to sort of anchor yourself in the astrology and how it really works. Okay, so I'm talking about this yod. Jupiter and Gemini at the tip of the triangle, the apex of the triangle. We had Pluto and Capricorn and Saturn and Scorpio at the base of the triangle. Okay? So to give you an example of how this caused restlessness and uncomfortable adjustments in my own chart. So I had Jupiter at the apex 
in my 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals back in 2012, 2013. I had Pluto in my Capricorn 6th house of daily work, health, routine. And Saturn in my Scorpio 4th house of home, family, property, and real estate. So think about those themes as I sort of talk about what was going on in my life. So Jupiter was expanding the area of my friends, my groups, communities, and long-term goals. This was my last semester in college. I had many friends. I had formed many groups, communities. I, you know, not just personal friends, but I was also volunteering and I had my internship and I was also um, working over the weekend. So I had many groups and people I was affiliated with in, in addition to very like close personal friendships. And it was definitely expanding that area. But I went, I went far away to college. So home and family, where Saturn was, and my daily work, my health and routines, where Pluto was, <clears throat> excuse me, was sort of not on the same page, right? The base of the triangle, it's like those two planets were speaking the same language, but that Jupiter with my friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals, like wasn't speaking the same language, wasn't on the same page. And I had to make uncomfortable adjustments at that time in order to integrate the home and family situation, my health, my work, and my daily routines. And so at this point in my life, although Jupiter was expanding the friends, groups, and communities, long-term goal stuff for me, I had to make really challenging decisions at this time of am I going to move back home how is this going to affect my long-term relationship that I'm in now we're married but looking back on that time it was really really hard on us Um, and also in order for me to get a job in the line in the line of work that I was interested in at the time I had to move back home So there was just a lot of uncomfortable adjustments um, in addition to my health. So Pluto going into my sixth house really started to amplify. um, I have a lot of fertility hormone issues. I pretty much dealt with it most of my life, but it really got amplified in my early 20s. Um, So I had to make additional uncomfortable adjustments in order to be able to transform and work with my health. So it was a really difficult time in terms of literally having to uproot my life, but also my, my now husband's life, um, which was very hard on us. It was very challenging. Um, there was financial problems. There was like, where are we going to live? What are we going to do? I had my health problems really amplified on top of that. It took a long time to figure those out. It took like a good chunk of my 20s to actually figure out what was going on and what were the solutions with that. But I also had so many friends, groups, communities, and like I had a full bountiful life where I lived away from home. And I felt like I had to make really uncomfortable adjustments where I had to let go of that. I had to move away from that in order to try to relieve the restlessness Um involved in that configuration so there was a direct correlation um in my chart again I have personal placements in these areas that were definitely intensifying it so my story is very different from anyone else's with this but I I I like to give you personal examples to, to tell you like you can see the if you really get to know your chart or you really work with an astrologer, you can really see the, um, see it come to life. And 
so yeah, that was, Jupiter was very expansive and abundant and benefic in many ways, but the last time it was in Gemini, I had to make some really uncomfortable adjustments regarding my health, my work, and home. Now, this time, Jupiter and Gemini will actually trine Pluto. So instead of a quincunx, which is like an uncomfortable adjustment, it's actually going to trine, which is a more positive flow type of aspect. So Jupiter and Gemini is going to trine Pluto instead of that uncomfortable quincunx the last time, which we could feel through June of this year. So through like May, May, June of this year, that Jupiter and Gemini will try and Pluto. So Jupiter's relationship to Pluto this time will be a little bit more positive. However, whatever is expanding in Gemini, what can we positively transform with Pluto? Okay. Now, August 13th, 2024. Again, you're going to feel this maybe a week or two before or a week or two after. Um, there's orbs around these these aspects. So again, August 13th, 2024, Jupiter and Mars will be conjunct at 16 degrees Gemini in a close square with Saturn and Pisces. So both Jupiter and Saturn by essential dignity are not really well resourced. So these planets, they're... They're not really well resourced. They're not. Um, it's not sometimes having planets that are not well resourced. Sometimes that's a good thing. Um, but Jupiter and Mars is very like Mars wants to go. Mars wants to make things happen. Um, Jupiter wants to expand those things. The square to Saturn in Pisces where Saturn wants to pump the brakes kind of slow things down might cause some tension so again the square is a taking action aspect in august now saturn is having a hard time finding boundaries and structures in pisces saturn is sort of searching for balance between the tangible structure to support compassion while jupiter and gemini is trying to find the truth by exploring opposites and even contradictions. So Jupiter and Gemini likes to bounce around from idea to idea. Jupiter and Gemini, you can like even find yourself, um, depending on where it is in your chart, you can find yourself having like meeting people or having friends um, from totally different areas of life. Um, So Jupiter and Gemini is trying to find the truth. Exploring opposites, again, even contradictions. So this square is going to be interesting because you essentially have an aspect that requires action, but the two planets that are sort of all over the place or even misguided is sort of Jupiter and Saturn, in my opinion. Now, Mars is definitely going to be influencing Jupiter, but that Mars is also square Saturn. So you have the two malefics square each other and Mars has a little bit more Um, a little bit more ability in Gemini. Um, So we might be wanting to expand and take action on things, but at the same time pumping the brakes and maybe slowing things down to find out, okay, what is the truth in my situation or what what am I trying to uncover in this area of my chart? And... Yeah, it's, it, this looks like a very fascinating um, situation. And like I said, Jupiter wants to expand and Saturn wants to slow down and restrict if needed. So whatever is expanding in the area of Gemini, Saturn will come along and say, what do you want to do with this? What needs to break down or be restructured after some time of expansion? And so don't forget, it's also Mars square Saturn. Mars is in this picture and Mars square Saturn is going to add an action aspect, I think, of maybe some conflict involving like criticism. It might be a point where we, we, we want to move forward, but we sort of pump the brakes in a particular area of life where 
we sort of critique the situation. Um, and I think a lot of us might be expanding in that area of, of Gemini. But sometimes, you know, if we're expanding our horizons in one area, we kind of sometimes need Saturn to come along and say, based off of what you know now, what needs to be restructured? What needs to be critiqued? And so I think that's where the action aspect could come in, where we slow down and we think about those things. So I see the square as a checkpoint, a checkpoint to ask us, what do you want to do now that you've learned this? And this is going to be, and the this, air quotes, will likely be from the area or the house that it's coming from. So, you know, what are your beliefs, truth, etc. that you've uncovered? What action do you need to take to help Saturn find some boundaries and structures to work within the area of Pisces? What's interesting is as this first square happens between Jupiter and Saturn, like I said, Mars is going to be conjunct that Jupiter. So in addition to the critique or the added boost or energy that Mars gives, I think Mars can give us the energy and the initiative to take action and make necessary changes. So a lot of times when I'm looking at um, harder aspects, challenging aspects between malefics like Saturn and Mars in this case, um, where there's a benefic involved. And I'm looking ahead and I'm trying to kind of come up with my own theories on this where Mars is like going to give us action and energy and Mars and Gemini really wants to like learn and to explore and wants to like Mars and Gemini can get bored it wants a lot of intellectual stimulation so I think it can not only give us the energy and the initiative to take action and make necessary changes, but if you're feeling the tension or you're feeling problematic or uncomfortable around this time, you could take a step back and Saturn's going to help this, right? Saturn's going to pump the brakes and have us give us the opportunity to maybe take a step back. You can take a step back and ask yourselves, where am I not taking initiative and action on this new horizon or this new area that Jupiter is expanding? Jupiter wants to, Jupiter and Gemini wants to go to opposite ends of the spectrum to try to find that center truth. What is universal truth? Where is the faith? with these polar opposites, contradictory, you know, whatever it may be bouncing around. So we can expand, we can learn. But what's the point of expanding and learning if we're not going to use it, if we're not going to use it for good? Or it's not going to add something to our own lives you know, physical, mental, spiritual, whatever it may be. So I think the Saturn-Mars square in this is going to have us say, okay, what do you want to do with this new truth or new information? So if it feels uncomfortable, if it feels, you know, icky around this time, it's usually because we're not taking action. I think that's why squares get a bad reputation squares want us to take action wants us to move and 
Gemini and Pisces, where these planets are making a square, they're mutable signs. So mutable signs, they want to change. They want to adapt. So that's adding a whole, a whole nother element or um, a whole nother layer to not element. Element is the right word. Um, I'm drawing a blank. Modality? I don't know. I've been looking at too much astrology. Anyways, um, where can we change and adapt with the new information that we've, you know, um, uncovered? New truth, maybe? Um, or the expansion that's taken place in that area? And the end of December 2024, Jupiter will be retrograde and square Saturn again in Pisces, forming a T-square with Mercury. So Mercury will actually be in detriment in Sagittarius. Now, detriment, people freak out. Detriment... Detriment isn't always a bad thing. It just means the planet is likely going to overexert itself at times or overdo itself. So the planet of communication. So December 2024, you know, Saturn is going to be at the apex of this T-square, which basically means there's going to be a lot of pressure on Saturn between Jupiter and Mercury. So again, but this is, these are immutable signs, right? Sagittarius, Pisces, Gemini. So T squares in mutable signs with Saturn at the apex, Saturn will tend to scatter the most in this T square where focus will be needed so the area of pisces in december 2024 in our charts will likely be the area that wants to kind of scatter and just sort of like constantly change constantly adapt but it will likely be the place that we really need to focus on the most jupiter and mercury opposing each other in gemini and sagittarius will need to find a point of balance in this T-square, right? So Mercury is in Jupiter's home. Jupiter is in Mercury's home. So sort of these, like, both these planets are in opposite. They've done, like, wife swap. That's the metaphor I usually talk about. If you've been listening to me for a while, you know I love that analogy. Um, so... I think the point of balance will be found, fingers crossed, because immutable signs, like if this was in fixed signs, I'd be like, oh, these are not going to, they don't want to bend, you know, they want to hold on. But because this is happening in mutable signs, I think the good news is, is that we're going to be willing to maybe bend or adapt or change um, if needed. However, that Saturn in Pisces is really going to need um, potentially some more attention to sort of anchor instead of scattering. Now, if you have any personal placements in Virgo... I would believe, I believe like the mid, mid degrees of Virgo, um, this is going to be vastly different for you because those personal placements in Virgo could form a grand cross, which could give a sense of more structure, more stability in this. So like I said, your personal chart is going to vastly change the situation. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. But like I said, keep keep it keep that in mind. Like keep that information in mind. Look at your personal chart. Um, 
what does Gemini rule? What does Pisces rule? And then in December of 2024, what does Gemini rule? What does Pisces rule? And what does Sagittarius rule? How can you see necessary action coming up in those areas? And where can you see the expansion taking place in Gemini? But the pumping of the brakes and the need for structure and Saturnian duties in the area of Pisces. So for me, Jupiter is going to be expanding my 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals again. But Saturn in my 8th house is having me look at what are my long-term goals? What are my assets, my investments, um, transformational work, partner's money? So, you know, and Saturn's been in Pisces, so I've already been attending to 8th house themes for some time now because I'm, I'm aware of the chart and I'm aware of, okay, this is, you know, I need to use this tool to better this area of my life. So we've been focusing on that. But maybe Jupiter expands my long-term goals or my friends, groups, and communities. And I have to revisit my investments or revisit my assets and take action on that. Maybe I need to slow down to... You know, maybe there's more expansion and I need to slow down and then revisit the resources and the, the finances and, you know, maybe manage them differently as Jupiter is expanding any goals, long-term goals of mine. So these are just some things that I'm sort of contemplating before this transit takes place. So I invite you to do the same, but of course, if you don't know any of this and it's very confusing and frustrating for you, I really invite you to book a one-on-one session with me where we can you know I can teach you your chart I can show you around so that when you listen to the podcast or you read other material it's easily applied to your chart and you can you can gain a sense of understanding of it and that's really my goal is to have people understand their chart and so for now I'm going to go through each rising sign If you don't know your rising sign, there is a link in the description below where you can easily enter your information so that you are listening to a more accurate um, horoscope, transit horoscope. So anyways, let's get into Jupiter and Gemini. Aries rising. It looks like Jupiter is going to move into your third house of communication, siblings, extended family, really your day-to-day environment so like your car your phone your neighborhood your community so you could see more activity and expansion just in your day-to-day immediate environment or your immediate environment might literally expand you could also have you know a positive expansive relationship with siblings or extended family Now, communication, the third house is communication. So how can you expand your voice? How can you expand, you know, your communication? Jupiter rules your ninth house of higher education, spirituality, religion, long distance travel, really wisdom, right? What you know to be true. And it also rules your 12th house of subconscious, where you limit yourself, self-sabotage yourself, the 12th house of undoing. So where can you expand your communication involving your knowledge, your wisdom, your spirituality, your religion, your education, and also its impacts or what's going on? How can you expand your communication around, you know, your dreams, your visions? What's going on subconsciously? Where are you limiting yourself? Where are you self-sabotaging yourself? And maybe the expansion around that communication will help you uncover more truth or more knowledge about you and your beliefs and the square to Saturn in Pisces now the Saturn is going through your Pisces 12th house of that subconscious where we limit ourselves where we sort of undo self-undoing area so as you're communicating 
maybe with siblings or extended family, or maybe your immediate environment is expanding and it has a direct effect on your mental health. It has a a direct effect on your subconscious. Maybe through communication, you can uncover where you limit yourself. Where are you self-sabotaging yourself in your life? And you can ultimately take action involving what's going on mentally. What's going on beneath, you know, behind closed doors for you? What are your dreams? What are your visions regarding what you know to be true, what you truly believe, and how can you communicate that to ultimately expand your immediate environment and ultimately how you communicate with the world? Taurus risings, it looks like Jupiter is going to enter your second house. This is fun. Um, Usually when Jupiter transits one's second house, I usually see a lot, um, like statistically, I see more um, higher odds of increasing your income, expanding your income. Um, I've even seen a lot of my clients get like random promotions or bonuses and, and stuff like that. So Jupiter going into your second is I think I mean you have the the greater benefic going through your second house of earned income you know it's pretty good however let's break this down a little bit more so yes Jupiter has the influence to be expanding your your income your self-worth your material possessions how can you have more faith in your worth in order to expand your income, okay? Jupiter rules your eighth house of other people's resources, investments, assets, and your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. So there could be additional influences involving who you surround yourself with, your long-term goals, Where are you investing? What's going on with your partner's money? What's going on with any transformational work? And this could influence or have have an effect on the earned income based on your chart or based on your rising sign and the the areas the houses rule for, for you, Taurus rising. Now, as Jupiter is expanding the earned income, the self worth, the material possessions, and having an influence on who you surround yourself with and your long-term goals and you know your other resources, investments, and such. The square to Saturn in Pisces. Now, Saturn has been going through your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. So what's going on financially? And what's going on with your self-worth? Where you're going to likely take action or have to look at restructuring your long-term goals, restructuring who you surround yourself with. So this could, like in a very classic case, this could be maybe you are trying to expand your resources and you have to get very clear on surrounding yourself with the right people that lift you up, that you know, surrounding yourself with people that are in alignment to your worthiness, right? You're, you're worth it. And leaning into finding more abundance and expansion through expanding your own self-worth. And maybe by expanding your own self-worth, a lot of times when we expand our own self-worth, we often take action around who we surround ourselves with, right? We can take a good look at the people in our lives, the communities, the groups that we're affiliated with. And we can say, you know, Saturn's there to say, okay, what do you need to, where does this need more discipline? Where do you need to restructure this and take action so that it's ultimately supporting you and supporting your worth. It's supporting your your resources. Now the 11th house is long-term goals. So this one's a little bit easier to kind of piece together with these two. You know, Saturn is is creating more discipline or structure and routine around what are your goals? And 
the square to the second house of Jupiter is like, how can you expand your earned income to align yourself and take action towards those long-term goals? So really, this is just, I think this transit is definitely going to have you looking at who you need to surround yourself with, um, other people maybe to reach out to, reevaluating and restructuring your long-term goals and who you surround yourself with, but also taking a good look at your resources, the resources that you bring to the table and how you use those resources to ultimately invest in yourself or your life. Or, you know, if you're partnered up, what is your partner's resources? How does that play into it? So definitely start to think about how your income, material possessions, and self-worth can start to expand with Jupiter in this area. We all want to make, I shouldn't say all, but a lot of us want to make more money, want to expand our material possessions and expand our self-worth. But that Saturn there is really to keep us in check, right? To basically say, you don't want to expand your income, material possessions, and self-worth if you're not surrounded by the right people or your goals aren't in alignment to that. So Saturn's there to kind of help, I think, help you take action in the right direction so that ultimately if you expand your resources and you expand your self-worth, you're ultimately going to be surrounded by the right people, the right systems, the right structures, and ultimately be aligned to those long-term goals. Gemini rising, Jupiter is going to finally enter your first house of self, body, identity, appearance, really how you show up in the world, how other people view you. And this is really great. This is this is good news for you. Um, Jupiter is basically blessing you. Now, Jupiter rules your 10th house of career, public recognition, and it also rules your seventh house of marriage, partnership, and business partnership. So those areas can definitely influence. Now, keep in mind, Jupiter ruling your seventh house of marriage and partnership, it's opposite to the self. So a lot of you could be experiencing this expansion of the self, maybe expansion out in the world, and having to balance that with the partnership area. Now, what I really want to talk about is the square between Jupiter, Saturn, and and Mars as well. Now, Jupiter is going through your first, expanding the self, body, appearance, identity, how you show up in the world, blessing you in those areas. But the square to Saturn is in your 10th house of career and public recognition. And this square could be a lot of you experiencing the expansion of self and how to maybe not revise, but how do I take action with how I'm expanding and integrating that within my career, my business, or my public image? but in a very strategic, disciplined way, right? We're dealing with Saturn. Jupiter wants to expand and Mars will be there as well briefly, but Saturn wants to pump the brakes. And Saturn wants to pump the brakes in terms of career, business, and public recognition. This is nothing new. Saturn's been going through this area, um, having a lot of you reach a maturation, reach a level of mastery, um, in the career while also having, you know, anytime we master or we're reaching a level of maturation, there's some discipline, there's some restriction there. And so we make the right, we make the right decisions long-term. So this square could be the the challenge that comes up with this is a lot of you are going to be seeing so much expansion around the self and, having to integrate that with you know still remaining disciplined and strategic in the career the business and the public image and also keep in mind the opposition this is an angular house 
Jupiter is in an angular house, so it's also going to square your fourth house of home and family, Virgo, and oppose that seventh house of marriage, like I've already mentioned. So yes, a lot of expansions going on with you, but it's going to cause some changes in the home, family, property, real estate, and the career, business, and public image. And how can you balance the expansion of self with your closest loved ones or essentially the other cancer risings jupiter is going to enter your 12th house of subconscious dreams visions really like where we limit ourselves self-sabotage ourselves it's you know it's in more modern astrology the house of undoing and so jupiter is going to expand your mind potentially even the deeper aspects of your mind. So if you're doing any like subconscious work, if you're doing any transformational work, you're doing anything for like mental health, anything like that, um, I think Jupiter is going to expand this area quite a bit for you all. Now, again, this isn't conclusive. What personal placements do you have here? Um, And so Jupiter also rules your sixth house of daily work, health, routine, in your ninth house of higher education, spirituality, religion, long distance travel. So these are also going to play a part in this, most likely. Um, so how, how, what's going on in your mind? What are the deeper aspects of your mind? Where do you limit yourself? Where do you self-sabotage yourself? And how can you use Jupiter to have more faith in yourself? to change that area or change what is needed in that area for you to balance the opposite house that it rules the health the work the routine so how how can focusing on the deeper aspects of your mind and your dreams and sort of where you limit yourself and change that to have more faith in yourself right because the ninth house is like spirituality and religion as well. So how can you really have faith in what you know to be true, faith in your spirituality, faith in what you believe to transform these areas or expand this area that ultimately could create a lot more balance with your health, your work, and your routine. Now, the square with Saturn that I talked about in the intro Jupiter is going to square Saturn in your Pisces ninth house, higher education, spirituality, religion, long distance travel. Some of you have your midheaven here in Pisces. So like I said, look at your personal charts. That's going to, because if you have your midheaven here, it's going to um, definitely involve your career, your business, your public image. So what's going on with the subconscious What's going on in the deeper aspects of your mind that could create action involving what you believe? What's your knowledge? What do you know to be true? Are you seeking more education? Are you teaching? Do you have a religion, spirituality? Are you traveling? any long distance travel. Saturn's been there, so it's nothing new. So whatever's expanding in the deeper aspects of your mind might have you taking action and creating action or change involving what you know to be true. What you, you know, maybe some of you are taking action around getting more education. Maybe some of you are taking action around international travel or traveling. And maybe some of you are expanding the deeper aspects of your mind to, ex- to take action and be more disciplined and create more structure around your spirituality or your religion that ultimately could help serve the faith and the expansion that's going on with your mind. And ultimately, if you think long-term about this, this transit is 
preparing you for when Jupiter enters your first house of self, body, appearance, identity, how you show up in the world. And Jupiter will be exalted in your first house. So whatever's going on mentally, where do you limit yourself, where do you self-sabotage yourself, how is that getting you to be more disciplined and, and restructure you know, your spirituality, your religion, your knowledge, seeking more knowledge, teaching. Again, if your midheaven is in the ninth, it's going to involve your career, your business, your public recognition to ultimately get you to, to take action around these things so that when Jupiter moves into your first house, you can really expand the self, the body, the appearance, and your identity. Hello, my fellow Leo Risings. Jupiter is going to enter our Gemini 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. So generally speaking, you should see a lot more expansion, maybe even some abundance around expanding your network, your social network, your friends, groups, communities, and maybe even expanding your goals. Now, Jupiter rules your eighth house of sex, death, transformation, investments, assets, debt, loans, and your partner's money, if applicable. It also rules your fifth house of fun, creativity, romance, dating, pleasure, and children. So those themes can also play a part in you being able to expand your friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. Now, in terms of the 11th and 8th house connection, a more, an easier connection between the two, in my opinion, is, okay, long-term goals and investments, assets, debt, all those things. What's going on financially with you or you know your partner's money or business partner's money um, and resources where you can start thinking about how to take action or change your long-term goals. Where do you want to expand your long-term goals in a way where you have to become more disciplined with your resources and your money? Also think about, you know, Jupiter ruling your fifth house. What's going on with children, maybe having children, romance, dating, creativity. Again, this is the fun house. So, how can you also expand your ability to have more pleasure in your life, have more fun in your life, whether that's through just your own creativity, children, self-expression, romance, dating, um, that ultimately could expand your friend group, your communities, and also your long-term goals. Now, the square that I really want to talk about is... Jupiter in the 11th, expanding the friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals, square Saturn in your 8th house. Sex, death, transformation, investments, assets, debt, partners, money, all that stuff. Saturn's been going through your 8th, or going through our 8th. I'm Leo rising if you're new here, so whenever I talk about Leo rising, I say us, because we are in this all. Um, So Saturn going through our 8th is really nothing new. Okay, it's, you know, we've, we've been looking at our resources, maybe a partner's resources, maybe transformational work. Um, a lot of times psychotherapy lands in this. So what's been going on, you know, transformation wise, death, literal, metaphorical, um, you know, investments, assets, debt, loans, any of those things. What's been going on with that? Where have you become um, maybe more disciplined or more thinking long term about what you're investing in? Um, you know, the, the square with Mars, well, Mars will be with Jupiter, but Mars rules, you know, the fourth house of home and family, property, real estate. So maybe there's like a property or a real estate involved in this investment where some of you are getting more disciplined and thinking long term about where you live, what you want to invest in. Um, And ultimately, that changes and expands your friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. Either way, Saturn's been there for some time, you know, having us be a little bit more focused and disciplined. Um, And like I said, Saturn and Pisces sometimes, especially in December of 2024, would rather scatter, sort of disperse. But again, I would hold firm to focusing 
on you know your your finances focusing on your resources and any transformational stuff you have going on either way the point that I'm trying to make is whatever whatever is expanding with friends groups communities and long-term goals is going to have you uncover more understanding more knowledge that is ultimately probably going to have you take action on your resources, your partner's resources, transformational goals, paying off debt, investing, assets, and such. So just keep that in mind as that's all happening. So if you meet a particular person or you become affiliated with a group or community or you start to think about your long-term goals, don't forget about Saturn. That Saturn square in August and December especially is uh, going to have us take, you know, require us to say, okay, yes, this area is expanding, but what are you uncovering? What truths are you figuring out? Um, You know, who are you surrounding yourself with that could really restructure the resources in your life? Uh, Where you invest, how you transform yourself, um, And ultimately getting you to think long term about those things. Okay, Virgo rising. Jupiter is going to enter your 10th house of career, business, public image. Now keep in mind the 10th house is an angular house. So Jupiter is not only going to expand the career, the business, the public image, public recognition. But it can also cause changes between you, the self, partnership and home and family now Jupiter is obviously going to expand like I said the career the business the public image whatever it is Jupiter rules your seventh house of marriage partnership and business partnership I put business partnership here and your fourth house of home family property and real estate so yes You can definitely see some expansion or perhaps some abundance with your career, your business. Um, It's trying your sixth house, so your coworkers as well. However, whatever is going on with the career, public image, business situation, um, the partnership area of life, home, family, property, real estate could be influenced by that. So maybe some of you are seeing how your career affects your relationships or some of you are maybe thinking about, you know, home, family, property, real estate in regards to a partnership. Either way, pay attention to those themes. Depending on your personal chart and your personal placements, it's going to play out in your specific way. So Jupiter... Jupiter is going to, like I said in the intro, is going to square Saturn in Pisces, which is that seventh house of marriage, partnership, business partnership. Excuse me. So whatever is going on with the career, the, you know, the public image, the expansion going on with that, um, it could very well have you taking action regarding your partnerships, your marriage and business partnerships. But in a way where whatever's expanding at work or career or business, um, it's going to have you take action, restructuring, and being more disciplined within those partnerships or marriage in your life. So Saturn's been going through your seventh house of partnership for some time. This is nothing new. So some of you are, you know, Saturn going through the seventh is not... uh, It's not always fun. It is a transit that often involves maturation, maturity, uh, discipline, having, you know, responsibility regarding partnership or marriage or business partnership. If you're single, you're still going to feel it because some of you might be getting or thinking about getting more serious about this area so Saturn, whatever wherever Saturn is transiting it's sort of like 
where we need to be more serious or focus or more disciplined and you know Saturn is the structure like to restructure so it's sort of like whatever is going on in the career or business department is going to cause some sort of action or around the partnership arena in your life now keep in mind like I said these are all angular in your chart so Keep in mind, especially in that December time frame, when Mercury goes into your fourth house, Mercury is your ruling planet, rules your first house of self. So um, a lot of you will feel this very much on a personal level, but sort of like, how can you focus on your close partnerships in your life or the business partnerships to create more balance between the career, the business, home, and family. And this could be, again, it depends on your personal chart, especially with angular houses. Like, do you have personal placements in your angular houses? And of course, if this is so confusing, I really, you know, advise you guys to book the one-on-one session because it can really, really change things. But generally speaking, you know, Jupiter going Jupiter square that Saturn Saturn opposite your first sort of like this is also going to have a direct effect on you right that that first house is like the first and the seventh is like me versus the other how do I integrate myself within partnership as Jupiter is sort of expanding the career the business the public image and opposing or trying to find balance with that home, family, property, real estate. So especially because these are mutable and, you know, adaptable and change, which could be a good thing with this, like I mentioned in the intro, just keep in mind whatever's going on with career, business, public image, just keep in mind how that expansion can ultimately, um, where you can balance that with home and family and how you can use that to take action regarding how you want to show up in the world, how you want other people to view you, and also how to integrate that within your current long-term partnerships or future long-term partnerships. Libra rising, it looks like Gemini is going to be expanding your ninth house of higher education, spirituality, religion, and long-distance travel. Now, Jupiter rules your sixth house of daily work, health, and routine, and also your third house of communication, sibling, extended family, really your immediate environment. So whatever is expanding around any travel, having to travel. Now, some of you could be traveling for work because Jupiter rules over that sixth house of daily work. Um, So some of you could be seeing more travel for work. Um, But if that's not the case, the... Jupiter going through your ninth could expand your knowledge, your spirituality, and your religion. And trying to balance that with that third house connection, right? Um, Jupiter ruling over your third house as well. So how do you expand your education, expand your knowledge, your spirituality, your religion in a way where you can balance it with proper communication? And... The square that's that's going on is also between the ninth and the sixth. So this is this Jupiter's expanding your higher education or your spirituality or your religion or long distance travel. And that expansion is involved in this in some need to take action regarding your health, your routines, and your daily work. Saturn's been going through your sixth house of health, work, and routines for some time. So this is nothing new. So a lot of you have maybe been a little bit more diligent and disciplined regarding your health. Maybe maybe you don't have health issues, but you're going to the doctor or you're getting more into a routine, a lifestyle, wellness lifestyle routine, or just getting more disciplined with your routines so that you can manage all the different areas of your life successfully, right? Saturn 
wants us to be disciplined and responsible um, so we can think long term and get those those goals and those rewards and for you it's in the area of health routine and daily work so as Jupiter is expanding your travel expand or you know expanding your travel or expanding your knowledge or your beliefs this could shift and have you take action in a more disciplined way regarding your work regarding your health regarding your routines so maybe the expansion of sort of the higher mind and your beliefs has you you know looking at your health differently your routines differently maybe the expansion with travel especially if you travel for work or you're going to be traveling more for work with this um, is having you become you know more disciplined regarding your health and your routines we all know when you travel for work routine is something that often gets thrown out the window right it's really hard to work out it's really hard to have a wellness lifestyle when you're traveling here going in different time zones etc cetera, etc cetera. so some of you um, might be thinking about how can I maintain my health and my wellness routine where I can still expand my ability to travel and like I said you know ninth house is knowledge so continuing your education maybe some of you on a very basic level will be learning more about something and and that something that you're learning more about plays into your ability to be healthier maybe you're expanding your knowledge and that allows you to learn more about your body or your health um Either way, I would definitely think about how can you learn more? How can you expand your horizons? How can you really dive into your beliefs, your spirituality, and even travel where you can, you know, dive into those areas or one of those areas that ultimately can help you be a little bit more disciplined and structured regarding your daily work, your routines, and your health. And like I said, especially in December that Mercury is going to come into play and you might want to sort of scatter or change and adapt a lot regarding the work, the health, and the routines. But I would say, especially in December, really try to hone in, really try to focus on like your routines and your health and and keeping yourself um, structured so that you can stay healthy and keep your vitality up and keep whatever success. Um, a lot of success is just routine and sticking to that routine. So I'd say in December, really try to, um, manage that instead of sort of scattering that or like letting that go so that you can ultimately balance, you know, what's going on with travel, what's going on with your beliefs, your religion, what's going on with your education, ultimately so you can balance that with your ability to communicate what's been going on. So communicating, writing, talking to siblings, extended family, um, working with your immediate environment to, to also balance that with what you're learning, your spirituality, your beliefs, or any travel. That can ultimately help, you know, try to anchor that Saturn in your sixth house of work, health, and routine. And a point that might help anchor this is the 12th house, the subconscious. So if you start to feel a bit wonky, especially in December, with all this expansion going on, I would really start to think about how you... Um, With the 12th house, I would think, you know, what are your dreams? Where do you limit yourself? Where do some of you sabotage yourself? With all this expansion going on, especially in the mutable, like I mentioned in the intro, where we sort of want to scatter or disperse, um, where can we make necessary change and adaptation that serves this expansion regarding your knowledge, your spirituality, your beliefs, and even travel. 
that ultimately, you know, you can turn to that 12th house and say, okay, where, if, if I'm really scattered, or I'm really just like dispersed, what's going on mentally? That's what I would say, especially in December. What's going on in that mind of yours that could be contributing to, you know, limiting yourself or shutting yourself down? Um, and like I said, sinking into the 12th house, what's going on in the mind? How can you anchor that with your ability to communicate and also balance that with your health, your routine, and your work while expanding your knowledge, your spirituality, your religion, and your ability to travel? Hello, Scorpio rising. Jupiter will be entering your eighth house of sex, death, transformation, investments, assets, debt, loans, inheritance, uh, your partner's resources, basically all that other people's resources stuff and transformation. So a lot of times when I see Jupiter go through the eighth, very generally speaking, I see um, either like the ability to get like a, like a bonus or... Um, like your partner's money might increase a bit or um, you might get like the eighth house is like other people's money. So like tax payout or a bonus or partner's money increases or an inheritance. Um, any of those things sort of pop up initially. Now, that's not the case for everyone, obviously. It really depends on your personal chart. Um I went through this transit back in 2021 and I will say that I did see those things happen in my life. Um, I did see an increase in 8th house themes um, regarding money and resources in really weird ways. Um, But my 8th house with that Jupiter transit was, you know, set up to be more positive um, at that time. So again, it really depends on your personal placement. So please don't take like, I'm, I'm, I'm really into like ethics and I'm not here to tell you like you're gonna win the lottery or any of those things. But if you, you know, if, you're, if your partner's due for a pay increase or, you know, looking for a new job or, you know, you're looking you know, someone, you you know, like maybe an inheritance is down the road, any of those things, start paying attention. That's what I'll say. It's not a definite, but I would definitely start paying attention to those possibilities. And um, all in all, maybe even an increase or an expansion around investments or assets. Now, the eighth house is also debt. So some of you might be taking on debt um, to invest in something or, um, sometimes we use debt as leverage, right? So definitely just pay attention to those themes. Now, Jupiter rules your second house of earned income, self-worth and material possessions, and also your fifth house of children, if applicable, dating, if applicable, creativity, self-expression, really the fun house. So, This is definitely, for you, Scorpio Rising, this has a direct effect on your money houses, your resources, whether it's yours, right, second house ruler, or the eighth house. Um, So without a doubt, I think a lot of you are going to see some money or some resources situations play out over, you know, the next year, right, May, um, May of this year to roughly May, June of next year. Now the square, Jupiter is going to be expanding those areas that I mentioned, the resources, the investments, assets, all of that. But it's going to square Saturn in your fifth. So Saturn going through your fifth is nothing new. Um, Saturn is just being you know, having you be more disciplined, 
have more responsibility or take on more of an authoritarian role regarding your children or your creativity and self-expression, right? What do you want to restructure? What do you what do you want to, you know, what rules are you creating? What uh, discipline and responsibility are you creating in those areas regarding those themes? Now, it's going to depend on per- some people have kids, some people don't have kids, some people are dating, some people aren't. So, really depends on you, your personal chart and what themes are directly applicable to you. So, Saturn is nothing new. It's been going through. So maybe it's affected your dating life. Maybe it's affected, you know, a level of responsibility with children or childbearing, any of those things. Um, And the fifth house is the fun house. So Saturn going through the fifth sometimes is not all that fun because it's sort of restricting that area. And it's sort of asking you, what do you want to restructure in terms of your idea of fun? Now, the square to the eighth, there's a lot, there's a lot that can play out with squares between the fifth and the eighth, in my opinion, because if you have children, Jupiter going through the eighth with this square could say, okay, what's going on with children that is having you be more expansive regarding your investments, your wills your trust your assets you know maybe some of you will be thinking what do I want to pass down to my kids and how do I want to document that right because that th- those are eighth house themes of like wills trust inheritance all those things now if you don't have kids you don't want kids um the fifth house is creativity and self-expression and having fun so maybe some of you are looking at your resources and your money and thinking how can I look at my resources or manage my resources to incorporate having more fun or being a bit more you know like like Saturn like I said Saturn's going through the fifth what's your idea of fun now it's probably changed for a lot of you um but if you're an artist right especially if you're an artist a creative um what are your resources? What are your long-term resources? What is going on there where you can use that to be more disciplined and structured regarding your creative projects and your creative self-expression? So there is a lot on the table. Now, the eighth house is also transformation. We'd also put psychotherapy in this in this house. Um, so transformation wise, like what's, what's going on transformationally in your life, um, that is having you take action on how, you know, your relationship with your children, what's going on transformational, you know, transformation wise in your life that's having you take a different approach to dating or romance if you are partnered up. So basically what's going on transformation wise in your life that is expanding? What's expanding transformation? Have you been going to therapy? Have you been sort of uncovering deeper aspects of your mind? Um, And uncovering all those things how can you now take action to also restructure you know your creativity your self-expression your relationship with your children dating and if you're partnered up like also romance as well like I said Saturn's going through that fifth most of the time when I talk to people I remember Saturn going through my fifth um it's very very common when Saturn's going through the fifth again it depends on your personal chart but um for you Scorpio rising Saturn rules your fourth house of home family property real estate and your third house of communication siblings and extended family so this is you know this is this is really restructuring your idea of fun especially because a lot of you probably have your IC in maybe the third house Capricorn or fourth house Aquarius so you're coming off Saturn conjunct the IC 
for a lot of you, which is it's very common to restructure your life. Um, probably a lot has happened for you in the home family department for um, a lot of Scorpio risings. And now you're sort of Saturn's moving to the fifth house and it's like, okay, like so much has happened and so much has changed, especially with those eclipses the past couple of years between your first and your seventh. So a lot of you have been hit, you know, in terms of your chart, like really hard. And that Saturn going through the fifth is like, okay, so much has happened and so much has changed and you sort of can't unsee it. And now what do you want to restructure in terms of your approach to children or your relationship with children or your idea of fun or your approach to dating and romance? And that Jupiter in the eighth is going to help you expand, you know, your resources or your partner's resources um, so that maybe you can, you can take action. You can still invest. You can still pay off debt. Um, as long as you are taking a disciplined approach potentially and you can still incorporate you know fun and pleasure in your life while taking care of those eighth house themes or the expansion with those eighth house themes hello Sagittarius rising now I think Jupiter going into Gemini a lot of you are going to feel this on a personal level because Jupiter is your ruling planet as a Sag rising. So Jupiter will be going into your seventh house of marriage, partnership, business partnership. So a lot of you could be seeing a lot of expansion in that department, whether you are partnered up or not. Now Jupiter rules you and it also rules your fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. So What is going on in your partnerships, your close partnerships, your long-term partnerships, or a marriage, or a business partnership, that that expansion that's taking place within that partnership or those partnerships, how can you try to balance that expansion with yourself, your identity, your body, your appearance, right? Right? Because the seventh house opposes the first house. So how can we balance this expansion with you, literally you, the first house? And the square, that Jupiter-Saturn square, I mean, like I said, Mars is going to be involved too. Um, But I really want to focus on the Saturn-Jupiter square because especially for you, Sag Rising, this is your ruling planet. And... As Jupiter is expanding the partnership area of your chart, it's squaring Saturn and your fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. Now, Saturn going through the fourth house is nothing new, right? It's been there for some time. But what has been going on with home, family, property, and real estate for some time in terms of discipline and responsibility maybe for a lot of you this has been a challenging area of your life regarding home and family and a lot of you especially if you have your icy in your pisces fourth house saturn saturn conjunct the icy is really a restructuring of your life it's an opportunity to restructure your life and create a new 14-year cycle Um, where Saturn climbs up to your MC. But that restructuring can sometimes be really painful. It can be really challenging. It can be really hard. Um, Again, it depends on your personal chart, but there could be an expansion or a form of liberation regarding marriage or partnership in that Gemini. And... Based off of what's going on within the partnership or within the marriage, how can you use that expansion to take necessary action regarding the discipline and the responsibility needed with home, family, property, and real estate? Now in December of 2024, Mercury is going to come into play. 
And Mercury, this is where the Mercury is going to enter your first house of self body and it's going to, it's going to form that T square. So it's going to oppose Jupiter and both of these are going to square Saturn in your fourth. And I think this is where maybe some of you might be talking a lot more regarding, you know, what's going on. But ultimately, there's going to be a lot of pressure on the responsibility with home, family, property, and real estate. And some of you are going to want to scatter. Some of you are just going to want to like disperse. Like it's, um, you know, or like not focus on it or not want to deal with it. But I think regarding the astrology, I think it's important to focus on that Saturn in your fourth of how how can I take care of this? How can I, you know, be more disciplined and see this through? What do I need to restructure in my home, family, property, and real estate situation that's ultimately going to allow me to balance myself and my partnerships in my life? And also don't forget that fourth house opposes the 10th house of career, which is sort of the missing leg in this T-square. So some of you will have placements in your Virgo 10th house that will form a grand cross, which is a little bit more stable than a T-square. But overall, this is about like how can you expand your partnership, your marriage or your business partnership to take more disciplined action regarding home, family, property, real estate needs but be able to change and adapt when necessary in order to really balance and secure you, home, family, partnership, career, business, and public image. Hello, Capricorn rising. Jupiter is going to enter your sixth house of daily work, routines, health, and also coworkers and even pets. So some of you might see expansion of just your daily work, your daily routine, um, expansion around health matters, um, also like working with people, coworkers, and some of you might be, you know, because the sixth house does rule pets, some of you might be getting a pet or um, thinking, <laughs> thinking about getting a pet. So I always like to add whatever any anything and everything in terms of themes regarding a house because it might be applicable to you. Now Jupiter rules your third house of communication, siblings, extended family, your immediate environment. So really like, you know, writing, um, your phone, your car, short distance travel. So it also rules your 12th house of subconscious where you limit yourself, where you self-sabotage yourself. So regarding you know, what's going on with work, what's going on with health, your routines, relationships with coworkers or people you work with, and pets, where you're going to need to communicate. You're going to need to um, maybe communicate, work with extended family, um, siblings, um, and really work with your immediate day-to-day environment in order to try to balance that out or like seek some structure in order for the expansion to take place around your daily work, your routines, um, even like side hustles. Like sixth house is like your daily nine to five, but I would even put like side hustles here. So what's expanding in terms of like your nine to five? What's expanding with other projects or side hustles? What's expanding with your health and your routine? where it's Saturn in your third house is requiring you to be more disciplined and structured regarding your immediate environment. How does your immediate environment, your relationship with your siblings, your extended family affect your work, your health, and your routines and your ability to expand in that area? Now, Jupiter also, like I mentioned, rules your 12th house. So definitely pay attention to what's going on mentally what's coming up subconsciously that could help you balance that daily work, health, routine, coworkers, pet situation. 
So the square with Saturn is interesting because the third and the sixth, when I look at the third and the sixth, I immediately think about your immediate environment, immediate daily environment, and, and its effects on you know your daily work, your routines, and your health. So the third and the sixth, when I... When I look at the third and the sixth, I just see like, how can you run errands? How can you, you know, see extended family, siblings? How can you be communicating? Maybe doing short distance travel, visiting this person, going here, going there, you know, going to the grocery store, all those like day-to-day immediate environment things that we do all the time. And generally it's effects on six house matters. So like your side hustle, your work, how can you, you know, expand your routine? to have a more disciplined, structured daily environment? Um, How can you have more responsibility and discipline within your relationships regarding extended family or siblings where you can ultimately expand the routine and the work, the health? Um, Especially if you're like working with extended family or you work with siblings, um, this could be a very interesting transit in terms of, you know, really having more responsibility and discipline within those relationships to ultimately take action to allow more expansion with your routines, your work, your side hustle, um, and your health as well, like your wellness routine, your lifestyle routines and such. But just keep in mind, especially in December, pay attention to the 12th house a little bit more. So that subconscious stuff where you limit yourself, where you self-sabotage yourself. Um, There's going to be a lot of pressure on that Saturn in the third. And some of you may, especially in these mutable signs, like that, that Saturn in your third house where You've had to have a little bit more responsibility with siblings or response, you know, um, relationship with siblings or extended family, immediate environment, how you communicate. And come December, that Saturn is going to be at the apex of the T-square that's going on. So basically what that means is that Saturn in Pisces, an immutable sign, might feel so much pressure at once to disperse and not focus on that. And I think it's important to focus on that. So if you're feeling a little bit scattered, maybe a little bit all over the place, come December, I would be a little bit more diligent with your daily environment, your um, relationship with your siblings, extended family, Um, really try to focus and hone in on that because ultimately I think basically with the astrology it looks like if you really focus on that um you can basically balance your ability to focus on you know your the mental aspect the subconscious aspect and balance that with the expansion happening with the work the side hustles the health the routines the coworkers, and even pets are lovely cute little pets um And ultimately, the missing leg in this T-square, sorry, I live next to a military base and they're doing um, drills right now and the fighter jets are so loud, so loud, so please forgive me for that. Um, The missing leg in this T-square is your ninth house of travel, spirituality, religion, higher education. So some of you might have placements here that are going to anchor this mutable situation. Um, but if you're, if you're just, if you, if it's really hard to focus on that Saturn in your third, I would try to see what's missing. What's missing regarding, you know, knowledge spirituality, beliefs, what's missing with maybe travel plans, the desire to travel, um, that could maybe balance these three other areas in your chart. But overall, I would say come December, definitely try to focus on your communication, your relationships with siblings, extended family, that ultimately are really going to help you 
restructure to really step into that expansion regarding your work and your routines. Hello, Aquarius Risings. Honestly, Jupiter entering your Gemini fifth house is, to me, um, from a general perspective, welcomed energy. Um, A lot of fixed rising sign placements like yourself, um, especially because you, as an Aquarius rising, had, you know, have Capricorn as the 12th house. A lot of you have endured major, major uh, shifts and changes um, to the four major areas of your chart and thus the four major areas of life. So you, home, family, relationship, partnership, career, um, and then also that transition, I believe starting in 2018, maybe. Um, A lot of astrologers called it the COVID clump, the um, Pluto, Jupiter, um, Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn with the nodes um, in your 12th house of the subconscious. So it's sort of like you had a lot of you have gone through a lot of deep internal changes that have basically blossomed and are still blossoming into the external changes. So Jupiter entering your fifth house of fun, pleasure, romance, children, dating um, is going to expand a the more fun area of your chart. So I really love this for all of you Aquarius risings out there because in all honesty, it's it's needed. There's been, you know, most Aquarius risings that I've talked to, again, it depends on your personal placements, your personal chart. Um, it's been some, it's been a ride. It's totally been a ride. And so Jupiter entering your fifth house, you can expect more expansion and abundance or just an influential type of energy around allowing yourself joy, allowing yourself to have more pleasure in your life. Some of you are already kind of feeling this. So some people who are very sensitive, they can already kind of see that transition um, or that sort of coming in the horizon. So if you want children, this could also be, um, again, depends on your personal chart. I don't predict life and I don't predict death, but you can, you know, Jupiter going into the fifth, there could be an easier, more abundant um, influence with that. Now, if you want to start dating, this could be a more benefic, expansive time around that. Or if you're already partnered up and you want to incorporate more play and romance, wonderful time for this as well. Now, The fifth house is also creativity and self-expression. So on a very general level, some of you might be feeling more expressive, um, ready to express yourself out into the world. Even some of you might be doing it in a more playful way. Now, Jupiter rules your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. And it also rules that opposing house to the fifth house, the 11th house friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. So you could see more groups coming together. You could see um, more, you know, the, the friends, the groups, the communities, even the goals influencing your idea of fun or your need to expand more pleasure and joy into your life. Now that's square to Saturn in your second house. Now, Saturn, the square to Saturn, you know, that's going to be a square. It's going to be an action aspect. But Saturn going through your second house is nothing new. This is, you've been, you've been working with this for some time. And as an Aquarius rising, Saturn is your ruling planet. So you've been working with Saturn for quite a bit, again, through all the Saturn transits in the 12th house and Um, the past few years with the eclipses, in addition to that, going through your first, a lot of you are very well, um, (laughs) acquainted with Saturn. So again, nothing new. However, 
I see things shifting in terms of just this transit. You're shifting into trying to expand more fun, pleasure, creativity, self-expression. Maybe some of you with the romance and the dating, children situation. And the square is sort of the checkpoint, right? Like I mentioned in the intro, August 2024, December 2024. It's these checkpoints to say, okay, lots expanding in this area. How can you take action based off of what's expanding in this area and now how you want to manage your finances, how you want to manage your earned income, how you want to manage your self-worth? So wherever, sort of like on a psychological level, wherever we're expanding and finding more abundance, we have to sometimes take a step back and determine now that we have all this, how do we manage it? right? So my favorite um, way to describe this is sort of like if you want a million dollars, okay, great. But what if you got a million dollars and you didn't know how to manage it? That could be really destructive. So the square with, with Jupiter and Saturn is is not that situation i'm not saying like you don't know how to manage money because we are talking about the second house i'm just saying how can you as you expand that fifth house how can you still take action to create boundaries and structures around your finance your material possessions and your self-worth in order to keep allowing that expansion or that pleasure and that joy in your life, right? So some of you, it might, it might translate quite literally where you are creating more structure in terms of your budget to allow more fun in your life. Or some of you who are creatives or artists, um, especially with the fifth house, you could quite literally be expanding your projects, your art, And that Saturn going through your second is saying, okay, as you expand this, how can we create the structure and um, to to be able to keep doing this, keep, you know, create the the foundation to keep building this project or art. Um, And then just on a very like simple day to day level, some of you are dating um, or seeking romance. A lot of the a lot of the time it's like you have to spend money on that. A lot of time, not all the time, but some of you, you're going to be looking at how you're having fun, how to budget for that on a very general superficial layer. But on a deeper level, I think some of you, because Saturn rules your first house of self and that 12th house of that subconscious, um, I think you're going to be, especially with Saturn and Pisces being sort of this like very watery, like Saturn likes to build and Pisces likes to dissolve. So it's sort of like, how can we still be in this dissolved sort of universal compassion and have flexibility and adaptability while also having that structure to sort of hold it? Um, And that Saturn ruling that 12th and 1st, like I said, I think it's also going to have to do on a deeper psychological level with your idea of money material possessions and resources. So um, as you're expanding your creativity and fun and joy, it might, because the fifth house is averse to the 12th house, which basically means the fifth house can't see the 12th. So especially if you have placements there, there might be this, this situation that plays out where you start to see how what you perceive is what you receive and some of you might again depending on your personal placement some of you might quite literally be watching that unfold where how can you how can you yes be more structured with your finances your material possessions and also your self-worth like really holding a strong foundation in your self-worth while you expand more fun and pleasure in your life, but also in a way where 
it has a long-term positive effect on you, your body, your identity, how other people view you, and also how your mind shapes that. So just keep that in mind throughout roughly the next year in terms of, yes, on a general level, the money, the budget, the material possessions, the self-worth in reference to the joy and the pleasure um, expanding in your life and being able to take action on that. But how can you use you, how you show up in the world, how you want to show up in the world, and also all the changes to your internal state. Some of you, that subconscious state, some of you have been doing, especially the 12th house, um, have been doing a lot of internal work since maybe 2017, 2018, off the top of my head. It might be earlier than that. Um, maybe as early as 2008 when Pluto entered Capricorn. So I would really consider the power of the mind. And as Pluto also enters your first house for the next 20 years, how can you also consider stepping into your power, right? The power of your internal state, the power of your mind, what you perceive is what you receive. The power of, you know, you, your identity, how you want to show up in the world, and how you can really use that creative power and self-expression with the fifth house to step into that while also utilizing Saturn going through your second, saying, how can we create the structures and the container to maintain all of this for the long term with the ability to also change and adapt and flow and bend? Hello, Pisces rising. So Jupiter entering your Gemini fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. Now on a general level, a lot of you could see, you know, expansion within the home, family, property, and real estate. So, you know, maybe some of you are redecorating, renovating, interested in buying property, expanding property, all of those things on a very general level. Um, some of you just might be expanding your family or, you know, thinking of the idea of expanding the family. Either way, if it's not, you know, a tangible physical thing of like literally buying property or renovating or redecorating, you could just see more expansion and, and benefic positive energy within those themes of home and family. Now, Jupiter rules you. It rules your first house of self, body, appearance, identity, and it also rules your 10th house of career, business, public image. So those influences where you, a lot of you could be feeling this on a personal level because it's literally your ruling planet rules the self. Um, and you could also see the effects of you and the effects of career or business or public image having that positive effect within your own home or your family, property, and real estate on a very general sort of zoomed out perspective. Now, as Jupiter is expanding that fourth house of home and family, it will square Saturn in your first. Now, Saturn going through your first house is nothing new. Saturn's been there for some time. You're pretty well acquainted with it at this point. Um, but Saturn's been going through your first saying, okay, what do you want to reconstruct? How do you want to work on yourself? How do you want to work on your body? How do you want to work on your appearance? How do you want to work on showing up in the world? And it's in an angular house. So it is, you know, it's opposing the seventh house of marriage and partnership. So it's sort of like, okay, how can I sort of restructure or work on myself and also balance that within partnership or marriage and also make necessary changes to business or career and home and family in order to balance that and support that. But as Jupiter is expanding that fourth house of home and family, property and real estate, that square to Saturn, I can see a couple things. So as the home, family, property, and real estate start to expand, 
the square in August 2024 and December of 2024 will likely be sort of checkpoints for you to say, okay, what's expanding in terms of home, family, property, real estate themes that has me sort of taking action on myself? So a lot of you could see this expansion in this area, but also say, okay, how do I still stay disciplined by focusing on myself, taking care of myself, um, focusing on anything I want to restructure um, for the long haul, like Saturn loves longevity. So in terms of the body and appearance and identity and showing up in the world, what are you really trying to cultivate with, with yourself? What are you really trying to cultivate long term regarding who you are, how you show up in the world, how other people view you, and also just like your body, your appearance, and your identity? Where this, these, you know, it's happening in mutable signs. So although it's a square where you're going to see expansion in this home family area, where you're going to be taking action on, okay, how can I still stay true and authentic? to myself and what I want to do and how I want to take care of myself and how I want to show up in the world and also maintain this level of like expansion and even abundance within the home, family, property, and real estate. Now, especially in December, there will be that opposition between Jupiter and Mercury forming that T-square. So the T-square, basically you don't need to know what that means but there's gonna be a lot of pressure on that Saturn in your first house of self and a lot of you might feel this in your body you might feel this just like in your presence especially in December where you might want to constantly change or scatter but I think come December I think it's really important especially for Pisces risings to really focus on yourself Focus on what you truly need, what your body really needs, how you want to show up in the world. If, you know, you're developing or restructuring any sense of identity, this new chapter regarding who you are, what you need to change um, for the better, for the long haul, right? Really try to hone in and focus on that instead of scatter while you try to balance this expansion in the home and family and maybe business, career, public image stuff. Now, it's also really important because the sort of like the missing area in this T-square that could create more stability is the partnership area, especially in December of 2024. You might, you might feel it this summer in August, but you'll most likely feel it again. It depends on your personal placements. But I would say really try to focus on yourself and taking care of yourself and who you want to be, taking care of your body, um, and allow this sort of abundance or even just positive energy sort of flow into your home, maybe flow into your family. Maybe there's more positive changes with your family on the horizons. And you can balance that with the career, the public image. But most importantly, how can you really focus on yourself and create more balance and stability in your life by seeking those long-term partnerships in your life? So, you know, who's your ride or die? Who's, you know, what's your partner situation? What's, you know, even like really long-term friendships, um, anyone that you are sort of committed to or a business partnership that can sort of anchor this and create more structure and stability um, or even seeking out partnerships, seeking that help so that you can really continue um, building and restructuring and focusing on yourself, your body, your identity, and how ultimately how you really want to show up in the world as these other areas are expanding. <laughs> 